Hi, today we're going to work on graphing linear functions. So let's make sure we get our name on our paper first. So as we get started, we need to recognize that there are three basic rules of graphing a linear function. Sometimes our equations only involve x's and integers or numbers in general. Sometimes our equations involve y's and numbers. And then finally, sometimes our equations involve both an x and a y. So we're going to be discussing all three of those scenarios. So let's make just a couple of notes on the top left, top right corner of your paper. First off, if you ever have an equation where it is x equals some number, you're going to end up with a vertical straight line at this number as it crosses the x-axis. You will have an undefined slope and that's all it's going to be. It's really one of my favorite lines to graph because it's so simple. So our second option was y equals just a plain number and that is a horizontal flat line with zero slope and it crosses the y-axis at this number. The third option has both an x and a y. y equals mx plus b. And these are your slanted lines where b is where the line crosses the y-axis. It's your y-intercept. And m is your slope that we usually refer to as a rise over a run. And the rise will go up if it is a positive slope or down if it is a negative slope, but it always, always, always runs to the right. I don't care if it's positive or negative, we run to the right. Okay, so let's go look at problem number one. Exercise number one. So here I only have an x. x and a number. There's no y. So this is going to be like option, the first option that we saw. But it has to have the number on the other side of the equal sign from the x. So we draw the river, subtract the 3 over, and we get x equals... 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So this is going to be a vertical line straight up and down where x equals negative 3. So your x-axis is here, flat across the middle, and the negatives are on the left. So we say 1, 2, 3. So that is where x equals negative 3. And today You'll probably want to have a ruler just to help you make sure your lines are nice and clean. And there's my vertical line straight up and down through x equals negative 3. Done. Let's look at number 2 right beside it. Here on number 2, we have exhibited our second option where y equals a number, and this is already solved and ready for us. So we say the y-axis is this vertical one down through the middle, and I find where y equals 2, so the negatives, and this time it will be going down from the origin, so it's down 1, 2 units, and then I make my flat horizontal line with zero slope straight through that point. Done. That's it. Nice and simple. Nice and clean. 
Why don't you pause the video real quick and do number three and number four. If you need a little help, come and ask me for some. Let's go look at problem five. In exercise five, I have both an X and a Y in the equation. So when you have both of these, the first thing we do is label our Y intercept of B is negative three. And my M, my slope, is one half. When you are plotting a line, you always have to start in the beginning, B for the beginning. So that's what we do first. So this is a Y intercept, and I go down one, two, three units. Here I am, one, two, three units. B equals negative three. And then I have to move, M for move, at this pattern of behavior. Now this is a positive one half. Positive things go up. And we always run to the right from our given point. So from this point, we are gonna go up one unit and to the right two units. Do it again. Up one unit, to the right, two units. Now, if you wanted to make a car go backwards, you would put it in reverse, right? So the reverse of up is down and to the left, two units. Down one, whoops, and to the left, two units. And there you go, that's your string of points. Get out your handy dandy ruler, and there you go. Now if you don't have a ruler, and if you're taking your state tests, they're not gonna give you a ruler, it's guaranteed. But you are supposed to have your ID badge with you all day, every day, out on invisible. Your ID badge works as a fantastic straight edge to draw these lines, because that's what you need is just a straight edge. And that is something that you are most definitely allowed to use on your state exams, on the SAT, on the ACT, on your college placement tests. So that's a great practice to get into of just using your ID badge as a nice clean straight edge. There you go. So let's do number six together, exercise six. So again, we start with, what is my B? What is in the B location? Y equals MX plus B? Oh, it's two, okay. And then my second step will be, what is my slope? What is my M? It is a negative one fourth. All right, so we B for beginning, we begin at Y intercept of two. So let's go up two units, there it is. And we're going to move based on a pattern of negative one fourth. So since this slope is negative, we are going to go down one unit and then to the right, always to the right, four units. So let's do it. From my point, we go down one and to the right, one, two, three, four. If we can, let's grab another point. How do we go backwards in a car? Put the car in reverse. The reverse of down is up and to the left, one, two, three, four units. There you go. I like graphing. It just makes sense to my brain, having nice clean straight lines and dots and patterns. I hope it makes sense to your brain too. Let's look at 
Exercise 7. Now in Exercise 7, we start the exact same way with my y-intercept of b. It's negative 2. And then my slope is 4. It's just an integer of 4. And truthfully, I need a fraction. So when you have an integer, what number can you always put underneath of it in order to make it a fraction? Yeah, that's right, a 1. So you have a quiet, understood 1 sitting down there. All right, so step 1, here's my y-axis. Let's plot our y-intercept by going down two units from the origin. Now my slope is positive, so I will go up and always to the right. So let's do that from my y-intercept. One, two, three, four, up to the right, one. I think we have room for another point. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, one. Let's put the car in reverse and go backwards. One, two, three, four, one. Hey, those look nice. So a big hint to see if you've done something right or wrong would be, are all of my plotted points in a straight line? Because if you have like three points in a straight line and then a fourth point that's not, you've messed something up. And we just need to go find out what it was. It's not a big deal, you just gotta go fix it. So again, it's nice to know if you're doing something right or not before I find it. Let's look at example eight. Let's look at this exercise. So here, I have an X, I have a Y, but I don't have a number here to the side of it. Though there's something there, it's sneaky. What can you add that does not show at all? That's right, you can add a zero. Ah, oh, okay, so now we're doing things like we have been for the last several examples. So we'd start with what's my B? My y-intercept is zero. What is my m? What is my slope? Five over three. Now for this example, my slope is positive. So I need to go up five units and to the right three units. So let's start at one, our, our step one with a y-intercept at zero, the origin. And now use your slope. One, two, three, four, five up. One, two, three to the right. Let's put the car in reverse and go backwards. One, two, three, four, five down. One, two, three to the left. Handy dandy straight edge. There it is. Nice. Let's go look at example 10 together. In this particular exercise, my equation is not currently solved for y equals mx plus b. I need it to be solved for y equals mx plus b. So we have to get it there. So let's write a note to remind ourselves at the top of the paper to graph. We need y equals 
mx plus b. So I'm going to rewrite this here in the margin, but you really need to be very careful with your handwriting and the size of your handwriting, the neatness and the size. So I need to get Y alone. In order to get Y alone, I need to get rid of the 2X. How do I get rid of the 2X? That's right, you remember, you subtract 2x, and what you do on one side of the river, you do to the other. Excellent. So these two x's now cancel out, leaving you with y equals negative 2x minus 3. Good. Now it's in the right format for y equals mx plus b. So b is a negative 3, and m, whoops, m equals negative 2. So there's my y-axis. My y-intercept starts at 3 units below the origin. Now my slope is an integer. What did we say before that you can put underneath an integer of a slope so that it becomes a fraction and we can see the rise and the run? What goes under there? Yeah, 1. Nice. So this slope is positive or negative? Good, it's negative. So it will go down and to the right. Yeah, I always draw my arrows. They help me. They just help me to see where my brain needs to go and gives me like a road map. Road maps are great. All right, so let's go from our y-intercept down to to the right one. So I quickly ran out of graph. Let's put the car in reverse to go backwards. Up two, left one. Up two, left one. Up two, left one. Up two, left one. All right. Handy dandy straight edge. There you go. That wasn't too bad. Let's go check out um, exercise 13. Here again, it's not already solved for y equals mx plus b, so we're going to have to do that. Super careful. Rewrite here on the side. Negative 3x plus 2y equals 2. How do we get this started? I need to get rid of the x onto the other side of my river. So right now my x is negative. To, do, to get rid of it, you do the opposite. Let's add 3x on both sides of my river. This gives me 2y equals 3x plus 2. Now, is the y positive? Yeah, it is, and that's good. But is it completely alone over there on the left? No, there's a 2 with it. And that 2, right now, what is it doing? Remember, a letter and a number side by side are always multiplying. So the opposite of multiplying is divide. So the big question is, who is going to get divided by that 2? 
everybody. The three gets divided by two, the two gets divided by two, and now we have y equals three and two, that does not reduce, so it's just three over two x plus two divided by two is one. That's the equation that we're gonna graph. It's ready to go in graphing format now. So what's your B? What's your y-intercept? Yep, it's a one. What's your slope? What's your M? Yep, it's three over two. So here's my y-axis. Let's plot our y-intercept. Let's go up one unit. Now my slope is positive, so it will go up and always to the right. So from my y-intercept, one, two, three, up, one, two, to the right. Let's put the car in reverse to go backwards. So we're gonna go down, one, two, three units, and to the left, one, two. And truthfully, we could do it again so it'll fit on our graph. Down, one, two, three units, to the left, one, two. Nice. Handy dandy straight edge. All right, I think we have time for one more example. So here, yeah, you're gonna have to solve for the y. And let's rewrite 6x minus 5y plus 20 equals zero. So you're gonna have to move things. What do we wanna move? The 6x. How do I move it? Subtract 6x on both sides. This gives me negative 5y plus 20 equals negative 6x. Now what do I get rid of? The 20. And right now it's positive. So to get rid of it, subtract negative 5y equals negative 6x minus 20. Last but not least, how do we get rid of the negative five in front of that y? Divide by negative five. Who gets divided by a negative five? Everybody. So y equals six over five x plus a negative divided by a negative is a positive four. I think you can finish this worksheet. There's problem number nine from the front, and there's six more here on the back. To finish this one, we have a y-intercept of four and a slope of six over five is positive six over five, up and right. You can totally finish this. I bet you've got some great skills now. Y-intercept of four. My slope doesn't fit at all to go up. Let's just put the car in reverse. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so you've got seven graphs to do, and if you need any help, come and talk to me. Number nine, and then 11 through 18. Good luck.